Hello everybody, today we talk about integrals. Now, I assume you saw the previous video so you understand what the derivatives is. Derivatives, the function that represent the slope of the point x, right? Okay, that's good. We use an integral, totally different approach from your textbook so you have 100% understanding of what it is. We go this way, this route of learning is nothing difficult about integrals. Okay, so suppose you have this straight line mx, okay, and we calculate this area y okay so that is a triangle so the height is mx so y equals 1 over 2mx square right and if you draw this if m is 1 over 2 then at the 1 it's going to be like this because it's going to be 1 okay now m is uh, it's here it's 1 so this has to be 1 uh half sorry okay so okay so area function under this line is going to increase by quadratic equation okay because you add more area this area is bigger you're adding more area than the constant amount so it's increase now this was say y equals mx right so you notice something you take a derivative of this say area is s okay ds dx equals mx square which is y hmm so there may be some relationship between the area function area function and derivative right area function you take a derivative then it's become the function which you're taking area okay so for this function this area function we call integral hmm so integral function is the function that you take a derivatives you get original function you take a derivative okay here in this case area so it's happened to be this area function for this particular function uh, area function s x you take a derivatives then give you this y equals mx and sx this one okay so the question is naturally this relationship hold for any type of function right okay now 
before we get into that, we have to be careful here. Okay. Y, X, and S, X, it's a derivative. And we call this other way around this integral. But when you go around, it may have a zero plus a zero, right? Zeros can be constant and you de you take a derivative of constant it becomes zero so it's not unique because integral could be it could be this one or it could be this one you take a derivatives you get the same derivative function here. Okay, because this constant 1 and 10 is going to be 0 when you take a derivative. So when you call integral, it's not just the one function. Because the way we define this integral function is when you take a derivative, you get this function. That's the integral. So there are many s x plus 1 is also become y equal fr s x minus 1 also become this when you take a derivative so you have a, when you call integral 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 function it's not one to one correspondence there are many integrals. So we call that, we don't know which one, uh, there are many choices, indefinite. Okay. So, we know what to call integral. Integral function is, when you take a derivative, you get the original function, that's integral right and we take care of nomencl uh, nomenclature here uh, ds d dx ds dx is some function you take a derivative this is a f the derivative of s right okay so you can say ds x equals f x dx right so convenient way in math to ask i want to know what sx is how the sx look like because fx is mx what s sx looks like so what we do is we take a reverse operation which is called integral mark on the both side okay and this is supposed to be cancelled out so this is gonna be fx dx and what does it do you find the function uh, fx is mx you find the function that becomes fx when you take an integral uh, i mean the derivative which is what any number constant so this is what we are asking in the mathematics symbols find the function that become fx when you take a derivative that's what this means then you find sx so this can be cancelled out so this is going to be cancelled out that's the mathematic way to 
uh, express this math operation okay so ds dx is a ds divided by d, dx right and when you have a parameter function say this is fx and x equals uh, gt time function or something so it's going to be f g t like that okay ds becomes f g t dx so this doesn't match up how do we do this we need dx dt could be ut so dx equals u t dt we put this in here so f g t u t dt and you take an integral on the both side okay so this is asking what is this asking this is asking when you take a derivative with regard to t okay you get this function okay so if you if you um, untangle here you got dx integral so and so it's you know what it's asking this means you have to find out the function is going to be some kind of a function that's when you take integral it's become f g t this guy so how you find it it's a totally different deal okay that's what you practice in high school even college you practice that how you find it there are several techniques to find it and that's a different deal here you understand what it's asking this integral symbol means integral and the parameters dx become ut dt and put them together and from this function we want to find out this guy right no i mean we, we want to get the gt what is gt when you take a derivative become this that's what we are asking okay so it's just a math notation convenience and just meaning is you just has to know what is asking and how you find it that's a different deal that's a different deal okay so then integral now we know what integral is the integral can be actually area we show it when this line is straight but if it's curved line can we say this s x is integral y x this is y x right take integral this integral function is going to be the area this is also a totally different question because we define what integral is but integral indicate area below the function line that's not proven so how we prove that well we use this 
just slice into many 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 skinny rectangle right so delta is x divided by n and delta times this height is yx okay so each rectangle s is going to be when delta goes zero what you do is f i right each each location f i delta right and this when you call this hopefully we take a limit this final one gives you what you're looking for so this is what most of the high school textbooks show the definition of integral this actually it's not definition of integral right because it's it's sneaky they define integral like this and later they say oh yeah integral is the opposite of derivative then you said what we defined integral is suddenly it's become opposite of derivative is some kind of magic no we define integral as the opposite of derivative and one of case when fx is a straight line we show this it's become area but general case we didn't prove so here we bring up infinity concept again right you slice it and multiply and you add them all from x equals 0 to x well the I let you see high school Kakras book I'm sure you can see this the details prove and if you take a limit after you slice it it become like a bunch of uh, infinitesimal number you sums up it can be infinity normal number or zero it's it's not gonna be zero right so what you do is you take the area in this case is that in this this is not the definition of indefinite integral this is in definite integral definition so in this case it's area area is you don't have to you you cannot add a two or one and get the same result no you can't it's going to be a the defined by this is a definite integral so we have two different type of integral defined by calculating area using limit that's the definite integral and opposite of derivative is integral that's indefinite integral okay so we got a, we got a problem here we have a two different integral in the textbook but textbook doesn't say anything about it right okay so this is how you reconciliate definite and indefinite integral the this integral has an implicit assumption that you're starting from x equals zero all the way to x let's say if we start from a and the b 
you can do still x equal a to x equal b limit okay so this is going to be the area function of only a to b okay this area okay so that's different from the original integral 0 to x okay so we write this way this area function is a to b okay and fx dx so what do we do here if we know indefinite integral we can say this is going to be it right then you have a uh, okay, suppose if, if this S is like that, right? So you have area at A, A X equal A, and B. From here, you add up all of this that's going to be b and subtract this much a give you the area for this range only okay so this is gonna be s b minus s a okay so when you calculate after you prove that the integral function is going to be the area under the function yx we can say calculate area from a to b the it's going to be area up to b minus area up to a is going to give area between a and b right so we write this way we are calculating this integral area a to b okay this is called definite integral so definite integral has a starting point and ending point of area calculation that's the definite integral okay indefinite integral is like a zero to x and it's kind of implicit start with zero okay but indefinite integral definition is not area it's opposite of derivative so you need to have a constant c because you take a derivative of constant c it becomes zero it comes to the same derivative okay but definite integral is the area so you have to specify the range from which one x equal a to x equal b so you indicate that area range okay and after you prove that integral indefinite integral is the area under the function use this function to calculate sb minus sa okay i hope this clarify a lot of things you have a problem with in the integral okay if you like this video please subscribe and just let's see in the next video